Hey guys, it's been a while. Uh, welcome back to another video. Um, in today's video, I wanted to kind of go over how an XOR Gricer, so someone who uses an XOR window manager like BSPWM or i3 or any of those XORG-based window managers should approach a Wayland-based window manager, how they should rice it and stuff. Because, from my experience, Wayland is just much cooler. Like, if you see my bar, I've got fancy widgets with rounded corners and whatnot because I'm able to use CSS in my bar. And I've also got a notification tray. And this is actually a standalone program that gives me notification that gives me a notification tray along with a fancy uh, notification that can also support notification buttons uh, and notification icons. So I also have an X button here. Uh, put it simply, um, Wayland is just much cooler. So I wanted to kind of go over how an Xorg user can approach Wayland. And I want to jump right into it. So first off, uh, PyCom. We all know it. We all love it. Um, you'll you'll probably be very familiar with PyCom. Uh, it's how you get all the fancy blurring and transparency and even sometimes animations on your Xorg window managers. And I want to inform you that don't even try installing PyCom on Wayland because you don't need it. Wayland actually uses less computer resources because you don't need to run a separate compositor because what you refer to as a Wayland window manager is actually in the Wayland community referred to as a Wayland compositor. So if I open up some terminals here, you can see I've got fancy animations and if I switch my workspace, I've got fancy animations, you know. Um, I'm not running PyCom or anything. I this is without an external program. This is just Hyperland, uh, the compositor I'm using. So I'm just going to refer to it as a window manager, just to for you X users, so you don't get confused. But yeah, um, my window manager just supports animations. Uh, so now I wanted to talk about. Um, what are what Wayland window manager should you use? Now, personally, I recommend Hyperland because it supports the most stuff, the most cool features. So, like, I can have a gradient border. Um, so, for example, I can have a black border on my inactive windows, but on my active windows, I can actually have, like, a green and red border if I wanted to. So, it'd fade into each other. You can even set it up just right to where the border animates. It's really cool. Um, and, yeah. So, in general, Hyperland has a bunch of uh, features other window managers for Wayland don't have. Hyperland also has a really helpful community around it. Like, I found, I can ask even the stupidest question, and the Hyperland community is more than happy to help me out. Uh... Another thing is uh, Hyperland actually supports all the latest window manager fixes before the other uh, Hyperland uh, before the other Wayland window managers do. So like for example, Hyperland was the first window manager to support uh, desktop capture with OBS and it was the first to allow some sort of global shortcut method. And I just think it's, I think Hyperland is the best choice. Um, uh, so some other options you have for Wayland window managers is Qtile. Qtile actually has a Wayland version and you don't, it's not even a separate package. Like if I do sudo pacman-s, uh, if I can type Qtile, I can just do this, and it will install the X version and the Wayland version. Uh, another one is Sway. Sway is basically i3, but for Wayland. Um, okay, so now, why would you want to use Wayland? Well, to put it simply, Wayland is the future. It's what 
all the people are maintaining and working on. X11 is a dead project. Xorg in general is a dead project. It's um it's on life support. Uh X11, Xorg is no longer maintained. You shouldn't use it whenever you don't have to. Yeah, Wayland is the future. In fact, a misconception people seem to have is Wayland is this new third-party thing that's not affiliated at all with the X Foundation in any way. Here's the thing. Everyone who was working on Xorg, like the people who were working on Xorg, are the same people who said, hey, Xorg is becoming a mess. Let's just start from scratch. So, actually, the people who were working on Xorg are the same people who created Wayland. So, it's a little misleading that they're still called the X Foundation. But, yeah. So, um, yeah. Now, uh, I think maybe I briefly talked about this in the beginning of the video. I can't exactly go back and check, but, um, Wayland apps are way cooler. Like, uh, this bar that I'm using doesn't use a custom configuration language. It uses, um, an alright, you like, uh, you barely have to use the actual config file for configuring this bar. You'll mainly be spending your time in uh, CSS, in the CSS file. And CSS is very, very customizable. Um, so that's another thing. If you haven't learned CSS, I would really recommend learning some CSS. Like, enough to make a eye candy, like, enough to make a website that is pleasing. So, like, um, I'll show you my website. This is actually the first ever CSS I've ever written. And you know, it's not it's not the the coolest website in the world, but it's nice to look at and it's nice to hover over the buttons and it just looks nice. So I'd learn this much CSS before going any further. Um also, one gripe I had with Xorg um programs for Rising is they were actually missing a lot of features. So like uh, you may have heard of Dunst. It is a notification daemon for X. It allows you to have notification pop-ups. It is very, very featureless. Like, it, it doesn't really support notification icons. It cannot support buttons and notifications. So, like, um, you probably saw earlier I got a notification from Endeavor OS telling me I had updates. And you probably saw... There's actually a button that said update. Dunst does not support that. Dunst also has a really annoying configuration file. So, I'm actually using as my notification daemon Sway NC. You can install that on Arch with sudo pacman s swaync. Sway Notification Center. And this is re a really cool program. So, for starters, it's featureful. So, like, this is the kind of thing I'd expect in a desktop environment. So, if I send myself a simple notification, you'll see when I hover over it, I actually have an X button. So, I can do that. I can also right-click it and get rid of it. But then, if you look in my bar, I've got this little bell icon. Now, what is this? When I click on it, it's a fully featured notification center. I've even got a Do Not Disturb toggle. Like, this is nuts, and I had to do no further coding to get this. This is all packaged into Sway NC. No fancy scripts, nothing. This is just standard Sway NC. And, of course, it looks nice and coherent because it's configured with CSS, just like Waybar. Um, so, yeah. And it's just an amazing, an amazing notification daemon. Uh, if you want something simple like Dunst, you can use a program called Mako, uh, M-A-K-O, and it's a good program. I've used it, but Sway NC is just by far the best one. And so, okay, I think I spaced over my bar. So, you may be familiar with Polybar, and you may know that Polybar is hard to configure, sort of. It's... You, it's easy to configure, but it's hard to make it look nice. 
Like, it's not a very flexible bar. Well, here I have Waybar, which, again, is configured in CSS. So, as it's the limits of its configuration are the limits of your CSS knowledge. So, as long as you know, like, a crazy amount of CSS, you can make a crazy good bar. Like, I could make it so when I hover over this, this pops off the bar and hovers down a little bit. Like, CSS, as long as CSS can do it, the bar can do it. Which is nuts. It, it's crazy to me. And also, just, I think Waybar has a lot of sane defaults Polybar really has missed out on. Like, um, Waybar's uh, system tray isn't actually bad, whereas Waybar, uh, whereas Polybar has this weird system where its sys tray is separate from the actual bar, Waybar does its sys tray so well, like on my i3 rice, I just have a keybind to open trayer, cause the way the Polybar, uh, sys tray is just ugly. I I can't stand it. The Polybar sys tray also breaks on other screen sizes. So, yeah, I'm using Waybar. So, I've actually got a list here of programs. So, we covered the window manager and actually the app launcher. This is another important program. Uh, your app launcher. So, a lot of people on Wayland will use Wofi. Uh, so, sudo pacman s w o f i. This is a quote unquote fork of Rofi. People keep saying that, but here's the thing. They are so different. I don't think Wofi shares any code with Rofi. Um, like, I actually use Rofi even on Wayland because I cannot figure out how the heck I'm supposed to use Wofi. Uh, I'm sorry. Wofi, it uses CSS just like everything else to configure it, but Wofi doesn't seem to do that well. Like, Wolfi seems to be missing a lot of important features. Like, here's my Rofi config. Uh, it's using the standard SASS that Rofi uses. And I, I configured it. I made it look nice. And I think I actually, like, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I think I did a better job than a lot of Rofi rices. <laughs> um, I'm also using it for my power menu. But yeah, um... I, I just use good old Rofi still. It has a few issues on Wayland. Like, for example, if I focus off of Rofi, it literally focuses off. Um, Rofi is being treated like its own window. Like, I can resize it and move it. Which, I mean, is kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. This is kind of cool, being able to do this kind of thing with Rofi, of all things. So, I actually prefer this, even though it's a quote-unquote bug. Um, same with the power menu, so, like, I can resize it. And, oh, yeah, with the power menu, it does look a little broken. Because the power menu was never supposed to do this, but, yeah. Uh, so, I just use Rofi. Okay, we're skipping over Pycom, because that is just not needed at all. At all. Not needed at all. So... Wayland actually has a compatibility layer for Xorg applications called XWayland, so you can run Xorg applications fairly well in Wayland. And uh, there's actually the terminal emulator that I'm using, Alacrity. I'm pretty sure this is a st uh, like a standard Xorg, like it's an Xorg application with no Wayland version, but it works on Wayland because again, XWayland. So yeah, I just use Alacrity. Like, there's no alternatives. I know there's a Wayland terminal called Foot. I haven't really checked it out. It seems to use a solarized color scheme by default. Um, but yeah, I tried to check out Foot. But honestly, Alacrity works just fine. So I'm going to keep using Alacrity. And then the browser doesn't really matter what web browser you use. Now, Nitrogen. On Xorg Rices, this is how... You set your wallpaper. You can also use something like Fay, but a lot of people use Nitrogen because it's also like uh, a gooey wallpaper chooser at the same time. Um, so 
on Wayland, you don't use nitrogen or any XORG way of setting a wallpaper, because that works differently under Wayland. What you actually want to use is a program called SwayBG. You can also use Hyperpaper, so H-Y-P-R-P-A-P-E-R, Hyperpaper, but that's a little more com complicated and honestly not as flexible. Like, it's not as modular. It's harder to distribute a rice to the public when you use Hyperpaper, from what I found. So I just recommend using SwayBG. It's so much simpler. And if you want, I can show you how that works uh, later in the video, because after I show you all the application alternatives, I'm going to show you how to actually use them. So, alright, next one, after the wallpaper... We have libnotify and notification daemon. These stay the same. These are just notification uh, things. Things you need to actually send notifications. Now, I already covered Dunst. That can be replaced with Sway NC or Mako. Uh, better lock screen. Now, you definitely want to have a lock screen. This is something I'm definitely not going to skip. So, on... Um, so on Wayland, you you never want to use an XORG lock screen. It's just not going to work. It's going to break things. It's going to be really easy to get into your computer if you use an XORG screen, uh, screen saver or lock screen. That's just not what it's for. Um, so what I would recommend is using a program called GTK Lock. And I don't know if this will show up on the recording, but here's GTK Lock if you can see it. It's a very simple lock screen. And the way you install is, I think this is actually in the AUR. So if I pacman-ss to see if it's in the standard repos. Yeah, no, it's an AUR package. So if I just confirm. Yeah, so the way you would install this is you would do sudo. So, so actually you just type in paru-s gtk lock like this. Um, and I'll have a package list in the description, uh, so you don't have to look at my screen to see how to spell this stuff. I'll have it all listed in the description below. Um, so, that's the lock screen. And actually, this is a really random side note, but, um, back when I was talking about Waybar, uh, you don't actually want to do sudo pacman-s Waybar if you're on Hyperland. You actually want to do uh, par Paru or Yay, because it's an AUR package. You want to do Paru-s Waybar-hyperland-git, like this. And I will have this in the description once again. I will also try and denote for you Arch users, like me, in the description whenever a package is an AUR package or not. So yeah, just a quick side note, but it's an important one. All right. Um, what do we have next? Okay, network manager, that's just for your Wi-Fi. Blues, blues utils, bluemen, th those are just standard. Um, papyrus icon theme and any GTK themes or fonts like notifonts emoji, those are all, they'll work just fine. Um, yeah. Okay, polybar, I already told you, is replaced with waybar. LX session, this is your Paul kit thing. It can actually just stay the same. Uh, okay, screenshot utilities. So, on a lot of X window manager rices, you will have flame shot. On Wayland, you want to use a program like Slurp. Or, so Slurp is a way to actually get a selection area. Now, if you, and then there's a program called Grim, which is to take a screenshot. And then there's actually a program you can install that, that I believe is an AUR package, so paru s. It's called Grim Blast. So it's Grim, but with blast tacked on top, all one word, no dash. So if I run this, um, so if I so I'll I'll show you how to use this in a little bit because you can't just run Grim Blast. There are some options you put in, but yeah, it combines Slurp and Grim together to make a screenshot utility. 
that's actually a lot more flexible than something like flame shot because the way you use it is you can select a place on your screen or you can click on a window to select the window it's it's really cool all right um so conky uh sadly i don't actually know any conky alternatives because i don't actually use conkies i don't really find them useful Okay, Brightness, CTL, and Light. Uh, these are programs, so Brightness, CTL is for setting your backlight intensity, and then Light is for getting, in a clean format, the intensity of your backlight. So these will actually work just fine, like you just saw. Alright, uh, LX Appearance. Uh, you actually do not want to use LX Appearance on Wayland. Instead, you want to use a program called NWG Look. This is a lot like LX Appearance, but it works under Wayland. So, um, I believe this is an AUR package, so if I pardash ss NWG Look. Yeah, so, again, I will have this all in the description, but yeah, NWG-LOOK. So, um, yeah. Alright, and then we got, what next? So, after Alex appearance, we have YAD. YAD, uh, this is just an optional thing. It works just fine under Wayland. You'll be fine. Now, Socks. Socks is a program you can use to play audio using your terminal. So, it gives you this command, play, and then the audio file you want to play. This works just fine under Wayland, because again, it's only your display server that's different. Your audio server is the fine is is the same. So pulse audio pipe wire. You'd have to bring it up with them to see if it would work. Pulse audio or pipe wire. Ew um if you use the ew widget system on uh Wayland, you actually want to use ew dash Wayland. Uh so yeah. That out of the way, what's next? Trayer. Uh, you don't need Trayer. It should work. Like, if I run Trayer, uh, it works, sort of. I mean, it's a little broken because it's an X application that asks to be a layer. But it works. But I, I wouldn't, I don't see when you would have to use it. Because, again, Waybar works just fine. Like, the... The system tray in Waybar is not crap. And then these are some just GDK themes and cursor themes and whatnot. Okay, QT5CT. This actually works just fine in Wayland. Because, um, again, you aren't setting your cursor with a QT theme. So this works just fine. Alright, uh, next... Uh, login manager, if you are using SDDM, this is kind of important. If you just do, like, sudo pacman-s SDDM, uh, SDDM does work, but whenever you try and reboot or shut down your system, it takes a long time doing nothing but waiting for SDDM. Like, you'll even see, if you're using systemd, waiting for simple display manager, and it, it it's a bug or something. So, if you are on Arch, you can just do paru-s sddm-git, or, yeah, that's, like, with the AUR, yay-s, whatever. You want to use the git package of sddm, uh, because it fixes this problem. Um, uh, shout out to Chris Titus Tech for actually telling me that, and yes, I, d I do occasionally watch his videos. <laughs> <sighs> he has some pretty cool videos, I'm not going to lie. Um, Alright, this is just some stuff. Alright, so those are the programs, like, their alternative package names and alternatives. So now I'm going to tell you how to actually use them, starting with Hyperland. Uh, I'm not going to go too in-depth about Rising Hyperland, since this is not necessarily what this video is about. This is a general guide to Wayland. Um... But anywho, um, Hyperland, uh, you, you put all your configs in dot config slash hyper, 
HYPR. And I'm going to blow up my terminal just a little. And you configure everything in hyperlint.conf. And yeah. And it will actually auto generate this file for you. One thing you will get is you will get a warning at the top of your screen saying this file has been auto generated. Uh, where it says this, remove this line to remove the warning, don't actually remove it. That does nothing, and it's a bug they need to fix, I think. Um, what you want to do is set auto-generated to zero. By default, it's at one, but just set it to zero and you should be fine. So yeah, uh, just play around in that config file and you'll have something good looking up and running. Because, again... Window manager rices that have a um, example config are usually very easy to get up and running. All right, uh, Rofi, I'm not gonna go over that because it's just the same as on X. Um, right, okay. Sway BG. So if I cat my um, auto start file for Hyperland, you can see that Sway BG is in my libs file actually so if i cat my lib file um the way you sw sway bg is you type sway bg so i'm gonna actually open a new terminal just to showcase this you type sway bg and then you type dash i and specify the image path uh so um, I don't know. Yeah, like this. And then, uh, you type in the outputs. So you want to specify the outputs to, um, put this wallpaper on. So you can specify, like, a wallpaper for each monitor if you really wanted to. But if you just type dash O for outputs and then a star, it will select all monitors. And when you do this, as you can see, my wallpaper has been changed to this and um yeah and then um uh and then okay so going back to my list here uh okay one sec my cat really needs me all right i'm back i just had to let my cat outside so, okay, where was I? Yeah, Sway BG. So, um, yeah, so that's how you use Sway BG. Now, how to use Sway NC? Um, so, I'm not really going to go over too much about the configuration, but if I go to my config file for uh, Sway NC, um, you can see, uh, so... To get these default configs, you actually want to, uh, these default configs are located in slash etsy, slash xdg, slash sway and c, and then, um, and then these are all your configs. So, um, here they are in cat, yeah. So... Uh, and so, the first thing you want to change is when you vim config dot json. I guess you don't have to change this if you don't copy over s config schema dot json. Is you want to change the location, like where this is located. So yeah. And actually, I think this is wrong. Yeah. So I'm just gonna hot fix this. Uh. I'm just going to hot fix this real quick. So on camera, I'm going to fix my rice. Dot config slash hyper slash sway and see config schema dot Jason. It, I don't think it really matters, but okay, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, so you can do that if you want to. Um, so... Uh, one thing, so the way you launch the system tray is if I go to my waybar thing and I cat 
the scripts. Uh, if I go, actually, <laughs> bear with me. If I cat my scripts, tray waybar, you can see this command sway and c dash client dash t. So if I type this in, um, blown up terminal. So sway and c dash client. So the command is sway and c dash client, and then the option is dash t, and this will bring up the tray. Um. And when you click off, it disappears. Hello, this is me in post. I was editing this video and I actually realized to tell you guys that the reason I had scripts for my power menu and and uh, notification tray is in your waybar config, if you set a custom clickable module that just runs the command sway, da sway nc dash client dash t or rofi, it will actually do this weird thing it does the same thing in awesome window manager on the X thing, but if you click anywhere on your way bar after uh, clicking that module, it'll actually act like clicking that module. So if you um, make a simple script that, uh, so if I like simulate me making this, what I actually want to do is run this so, um, if I open a full screen terminal and I cat my um, hyper waybar config. What I'm actually doing is um, running this script on click. And what you actually want to do is put an and percent percent after this command. And in that script, you want to put something like this. You want to put your bash denotion, and then you want to put sleep zero point one. And then the command, so like sway nc dash client dash t and an and percent. I don't know why, but this fixes the issue. So yeah, that that's just kind of an an important side note that I would have kicked myself if I forgot to put in the video. But yeah, um, editor Jackson is out now. Back to you, uh, video recording Jackson. And I know it's on the um, Swancy bug tracker to have it, so you can have it slide in and out. So that's a cool little feature that's supposed to be coming. And yeah, so Swancy, I may make a separate video going more in depth into Swancy, but that's gen that's the general gist of how you use it. GTK lock. Um, so if you're familiar with a better lock screen, you know that the way you run it is better lock screen dash L. The way you lock your screen with GTK lock is you just type in GTK lock. It's simple as that. Um, so yeah, I don't need to go into depth with that. I'm pretty sure it does actually have a config file you can edit though to make it a little nicer. But your lock screen isn't really part of your rice so it's fine and then all right uh what's next uh ah uh, yes grim blast so i was talking about grim blast so if i go and i cat my hyperland.conf uh and i go to my keybinds and one thing I should mention is when you first hop into Hyperland, the way you open a terminal is you actually want to have Kitty installed, and you just type it and you put in super Q. It's a little weird, but yeah, that's how you get started. All right, where the heck are my keybinds? Uh, right here. So the way you uh make a screenshot screen appear that has you um, select an area with your cursor and it copies the output to your clipboard is you type in Grim Blast and then uh, argument number one is copy, argument number two is area, 
and argument number three is a flag, which is dash dash cursor. So Grimblast copy area dash dash cursor. Uh, and this, I think, just uh, makes it so your cursor appears. So then if I run this, you can see if I hover over, over my terminal, I can actually click it to capture what's in this window. Uh, I don't know if this appears on the camera, just uh, on the recording just fine, but I can select an area of the screen, and bam, that's copied to my clipboard, the screenshot. Hello, it's me again, Editor Jackson. Yet another blunder on my side is, in order for Grimblast to work, you actually want to have a package installed called ClipPist, and I will still have I will put this in the description with the dependencies list and whatnot, like the programs you want to install. The list down below. If you're on Arch, I believe you can just do sudo pacman s uh, c l i p h i s t. This is how you get uh, your clipboard to work under Wayland. So it will install uh, WLR-clipboard as one of its dependencies, but yeah, um, cliphist. You definitely want to install that if you want your clipboard to work. I'm pretty sure Gl Grimblast will actually spit out an error if it cannot find the command WL-copy, which is in cliphist. So yeah, definitely install cliphist for a working system. Alright, back to you video editing, Jackson. Alright, it's that simple. Alright, and then, um, Alex appearance, so, NWG look. This is what you want to use on Wayland instead of Alex appearance. So, once you have this installed, the way you use it is you can run it in the terminal, uh, but it is actually just a desktop application, so if you run it, NWG, look, it, this is really self-explanatory. If you're familiar with LX Appearance, you're already familiar with this, so I don't really need to cover this. This, so, um, alright, what's next? Um, ew, ew dash Wayland, it's all the same. One thing I will note, though, is Waybar does actually add stilts for you, so you don't need to do any weird padding nonsense with you on Wayland. So that's how to use the applications. So, um, yeah. Uh, so one thing, I, I will also link a video down in the description how to use OBS on Wayland just fine. Because it is, there are a few steps to getting it to work. Uh, and I will uh, link a wonderful video by Brody Robertson down in the description. And if I, fi if I find it, I'll actually do you guys a favor and I'll link on my YouTube video description, the YouTube video for it. And on the Odyssey description, the Odyssey video for it. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh... I'm going to ask you guys to like, subscribe, ring the bell for more interesting stuff like this. And if you guys want my Neo Fetch, because this is a rice after all, uh, here is my Neo Fetch. Some honorable mentions as I'm using Starship as my prompt. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video. Uh, I may be forgetting something. I don't think I am. So, uh, without further ado, I will see you guys next time. And um, if you use Revolt, I will. I have a Revolt server. Here's a Revolt. <laughs> it's taken a little while to load, but I have a Revolt server. It's a tiny bit dead, but we post some stuff in it every once in a while. And yeah. It's, it's fun. I've got uh, a good, sizable community on it. So yeah, join my Revolt server. Follow me on YouTube and Odyssey. Ring the bells on both platforms. If you really want to see my videos every time they come out, follow me on Odyssey because YouTube does not always promote my videos. So that's weird thing. Uh, I will, I'll have all the links relevant down in the description. Again, like, subscribe. I I'm just repeating myself. Um, 
I will see you all next time. Ciao.